I'm Chef Brandon Lewis with John Soils University, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to iron your uniform. Step one, collect your mise en place. You're going to need a hot iron, an ironing board, electricity for that hot iron to make it hot, and a lint brush to make sure you have no fuzzies on your coat or your pants. So what I have here is a standard issue instructor jacket. It's not too different from the student jackets except I don't have the little loopies on the collar, but that won't matter when it comes to ironing it. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coat and I'm going to lay it down on the board. One thing that I like to do is I like to use my ironing board backwards, but some people like it the other way. I just find the larger surface area on the left is a little more useful for me. The first step, or I'm sorry, the second step to ironing your coat now is to iron the collar. You just give it a quick swipe, it doesn't take but a couple seconds, and just press that thing flat. It'll wrinkle a little bit because the stitching's not perfect, but that's all you gotta do. The next step is to set your shoulders. To set your shoulders, you're gonna notice two creases on your shoulders. One is the top crease right on the top of the shoulder, like here on my jacket. And then the other one is one that comes on the back of the arm sleeve. And that one you need to create a fake line, a new line or a crease. We're going to lay the coat down. We're going to line it up. See this stitching? Try to line this up with the stitching on the back and just flatten out the jacket because what we have to do is get these shoulders straight so you don't have wrinkled shoulders on your coat. Next thing you do is make sure you have a straight line between that stitching and the stitching on the other side. Now once you iron your coat the first time and you make this line, it'll always be there and you can just trace it. For the first time, just press really hard. The key to ironing your jacket and making it look good is called elbow grease. You gotta push. Push a hot iron, not a cold iron, not a broken iron, but a hot iron all the way up, steam all the way on high. And if you're making a good crease, just use a little steam and it'll stay solid. The next step is to lift up your coat, lay it down, and start on a sleeve. To do the sleeves, lay them down flat so the, where they come together at the bottom is flat on the board and then push to the top and you'll find your top edge. For the first time, you'll create that crease. After that, you'll just trace it. One thing we like to joke about is we want to avoid uh, what we call railroad tracks. And you see I'm starting to build a railroad track there where I've missed my line. To fix that, you can just steam or spray with some water and press. And when you do that, you'll erase that railroad track that we call a race track going down your arm. Okay, a little pressure. And iron the sleeve flat. Don't have your cuffs rolled up or anything. You can roll them up after you put your coat on. You see, I get in here with the nose of the iron. And just get that sleeve as flat as I can. Flip it over and actually repeat on the other side. You see, there's still wrinkles on this side. So I can't just do one side and expect it to come out nice. Repeat with the other side. Next, we're going to lay the coat flat on the board, and this is why I like to use the full corner, so I can get up into the shoulder where we started ironing with step uh, two. What we're gonna do is press and with your freshman coat you have the fuzzy buttons as well so you just kind of go around them with the, the tip of the iron and press and don't forget to use a lot of steam. Once you get between there come up to the top and around where your name tag would go. And just smooth that stuff out. Now some people like to use spray starch when they do their coats. I don't find it necessary as long as you take your coat out of the dryer, you hang it up, and then you press it really hard and actually push. But if you'd like to use spray starch, you can. So after getting that initial crease on the body of the jacket, we're going to start rolling it across the board, laying it flat and pressing. 
Now, where your crease is up here, don't run that over. Just meet it. finish your crease. Now, we are done ironing this jacket, but the last step still remains, and that's preservation. After you iron this coat, don't put it on and go have breakfast and sit with your friends, eating cereal and watching cartoons. That doesn't really uh, keep it straight. You wanna hang this thing up, maybe put it in a bag if you'd like. If you're a commuter, don't wear it in the car. If it's winter and it's cold outside, carry it next to you. You don't wanna get fuzzies and you don't wanna get it wrinkled. Uh, from your jacket. And that's the uh, six steps to a coat. Next we're going to iron uh, standard uh, chef uniform pants. Culinary pants. Um, I understand that underclassmen have a different color, but you know, pants are pants and they're all the same. So initially what you want to do is if you don't have creases on your pants, you're going to start by flattening a leg out and lining up the creases where they're stitched together. In the middle, press them flat. Make sure you've got lines going all the way up to where the belt would go on a pan. Once you make that straight line and everything looks straight, then you can start ironing. Now again, you want to avoid railroad tracks if it's your second time ironing, and you want to follow your lines completely. Railroad tracks look especially bad on sleeves and on your pants. Nobody wants to walk around with railroad track pants. So you give this a good press and some good steam. And then you do the front side, or the other side, I should say. So when you do your pants, you should iron all four sides. That's two per leg. And you go all the way up to the belt. And that's important to go all the way up there so your crease is nice, long, and straight. Flip your pants over. Next, to flip them over, you just kind of crease them like you would put them in your drawer or fold them like you would in your drawer and let the bottom of them out. Make sure you find that line again. You might have to push your pants flat to get the crease. Check up here to make sure it's right. See there, it wasn't right, so I can line it up. Out of the dryer, they don't look as nice as a freshly ironed pair. Standard issue uh, skull caps are the norm, and to iron this skull cap, and they are ironable, and it's important to uh, either keep them straight or iron them if they don't get if they don't stay straight. The trick is you can just kind of fold it together, and you flip it over, and you can do the top first. So you get in there and you just flatten the top, give it lots of steam. It takes about what that take three seconds. Then you lay this thing down and you just do the rim, go right across the thing. It's pretty simple, straightforward, and again, a wrinkly hat's no good. Also, a stained hat is no good. If your hat starts turning yellow, I recommend a five to 10 minute bleach soap, and it'll come clean again right away. Then throw it in the laundry. Just soak it with bleach, a little bit of water, 10 minutes, make sure it's all wet, and uh, the sweat stains will go away, and you just wash it again. Next, we have a standard issue apron university. Put these aprons. The way you want to iron them is 
because the fabric's so thin, you actually want to layer them. So fold them in half so you have two layers of fabric. It's harder to layer to iron one layer. And with two layers, you can just fold it in half, iron right across, sort of weave it out, and fold it over and repeat. Again, well, try to avoid railroad tracks. This one's got them real bad. It's an old one. And as you iron it, you can also fold it like you're getting ready to take it to class and just make creases as you fold. And this will just make it a nice straight packaged apron ready for class. Now you show up to class with these items, your hat, your apron, your pants, and your chef coat, all ironed and looking good. You already look great walking into the kitchen. The chef already expects great things from you, and you're stepping, uh, you're starting class on the right foot. You're not coming in wrinkly and looking like a mess, and that's what you know the chef thinks he's going to get from you, or she's going to get. From you. So look good, look straight. This has been a Chef Lewis production. That's it. You can stop recording. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Makuch. No problem, babe. All right. Chef Lewis. <laughs>